Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. And in my last video, I talked about physical modeling and I had a violin patch and a few people asked about having that patch. And uh, good news is that it's going to be included within the uh, release version of Bitwig 3.0. So you should be able just to get it if you have that or it should also work with the demo, I believe. And there's also about 25 others that should be available in the release version of my presets and they'll be under the name Miles Deep. So uh, you can get a, a pretty good collection of my presets through there and that should be um, fun. You can take them apart and see how I did what I did and use it for your own creations. Uh, but anyway, so that's some uh, good news. And today I want to talk about um, wave table synthesis. Now, if you're familiar with Bitwig, you know that there's a lot of different synthesis techniques you can do. There's a lot of audio rate modulation that's possible. And there's so much you can do with that. But there's not a dedicated wave table synthesis engine within um, Bitwig. But if you're familiar with the sampler, you know that there is cycles mode that is using wavetable technology. But um, in a previous video, I talked about how you can use that to take a single sample and, and make a really nice sounding patch that can go across the entire audio range. Um, but it's, it's still a bit different than what you would get with wave, you know, um, basic wavetable synthesis. So I want to explore how you can get a wave table that is compatible with a wave table synthesizer like Serum and, and put it into the, the sample module within the grid. And we'll see how well that works. So let's try to do that. So I have a, um, a wave table synthesis uh, wave table here from Serum and I'm just going to drop it in. And let's uh, hear what it sounds like here in cycles mode. So that's not how it's supposed to sound. <laughs> it, I mean, you know, something, it's okay. So how can we get it to sound like the way it's uh, supposed to? Well, what we want to do here is uh, turn on the key tracking mode. That's step one. And then what happens here is that wavetables are divided up into frames. And typically, I would say a majority of them are divided into 2,048 sample frames. So if we can get uh, the bitwit module here to kind of subdivide in that level, then we'll be able to play it back as expected. So I'm just going to tell you what settings that happens to be and so we want to set the root here to f negative one and we want to do the sense to 23 and then if we play it that is how it's supposed to work so you might be wondering hey can i just do this with the sampler that's already in Bitwig, and yes, you can. Um, here's the same sample. Um, it's in cycles mode, and I just come in here, type in uh, F negative one and 23 cents, and it's loud. And it pretty much sounds the same as it does here. So let's see, you know, get a baseline and try another dedicated wavetable synthesizer and see if it does sound the same. So I have it here loaded up in Avenger and here you can set the interval. So I'm going to change this to 2048 samples and then I need to change this so that it fits the sample size here right there. So I guess there's 50, 50, 57 frames. There we go. There's some reverb, but I'm going to turn that off. So let's go to polygrid. 
Sampler, and Avenger. So pretty much the same thing, right? Um, but here's the rub. If I have the sampler and I play um, at high frequencies, ew, it's kind of disgusting. It's, it's a lot of aliasing going on. And that's where using it in the grid really makes a difference because the grid is four times over sampled. So if I play the same thing in the grid at a higher uh, frequency, pretty nice and smooth. In Avenger, it's a little bit quieter. Let me turn to make sure the filter in this thing is not triggered. So yeah, pretty much the same and we're getting a very nice uh, upward transposition of the sample in the grid, but again in uh, sampler i mean uh, that's ooh, that's rude so in the past you could do the same thing in the sampler but there would be some drawbacks and it doesn't really work like a genuine um <clears throat> a genuine uh, wavetable synthesizer um i'm just going to look at falcon here real quick in falcon it's really cool because you can just um go ahead and drop the sample straight in without having to configure anything. And it just works. And again, if I go really high, nice and smooth, right? And let's try it in Serum itself, the the mother of all these uh, guys, basically, kinda. Um, so let's find that same sample here, which is this one. And then I'm gonna have to uh, turn this thing on and give it maybe a bar and then drag it into here and let's see what we get. And so yeah, this has that kind of like bouncing to it and then um, this sounds smoother. So I don't, it could be that Serum is being more accurate, but these other guys sound more like, more like Bitwick does. Anyway, um, you can decide for yourself which one is best, but the cool thing is, is that it is very much in that league of, of uh, doing it accurately and giving you that effect that you want. So, um, you can use this technique pretty much with these settings with most of the wavetables you find. You can go online and get free wavetables, download them, use them in the grid, and have a lot of fun with that. The downside in, of, of using it in the grid is that every time I drop in a new one, if I drop this one in, I have to reset all those settings over again. And uh, that's a bit tedious. F negative one, and if I forget what those settings are, then I have to, you know, figure it out again or whatever. Um, but once you get those settings dialed in, it works really well. Now, if you run into a sample that isn't exactly 2,400, I'm sorry, 2,048 samples, then if you zoom in, you can actually see where the um, where Bitwig is is marking the the looping or the the frames basically. So if I change one of these settings here, you can see it's it's moving these around. Um, so you can do it by eye as well. And that way, that's how you can get wavetable like results from files that aren't really wavetables, just audio files. But as I said in the other video, it really needs to be, a sample of constant pitch if you want it to sound coherent and not just kind of like distorted garbly noise um, so anyway yeah that's how you can do wavetable synthesis with wavetables in the grid I hope this has been helpful to you and um, if you enjoy this content please go ahead and give me a subscription give me a sub and uh, that would be greatly appreciated and like the video if you like it 
Let me know of any questions you have in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.